confidence. I'm talking about self-esteem. I'm talking about self-respect, okay? So today I wanted to, to uh, share with you three facts that helped that girl in the past. And that girl was me, okay? Based on a, on a research that was done by European News, it, they, they, they said that between eight and 15% of uh, people with low self-esteem around the world are more likely to have depression, okay? And as you know, depression is not, is like not an, an easy like thing to handle. Depression can make you think bad things. In some cases, depression may people kill themselves. So also according to a psychologist who is called Fernando Torrento, he says that people with low self-esteem eh, tend to have disasters eh, in life, have, tend to be like sad every single moment. And even people try to convince them that the things are not in that way, they are still, eh, they are still like, Thing that everything is like the worst thing in the world. So as I mentioned, I want to share with you three facts that helped me a lot in order to change what I used to be. The first one is self-love, as I mentioned, self-respect. And I start to like, uh, been think about it. Like if I know, like love myself, anybody, nobody is going to do it. I have to start like, uh, doing by myself and then everyone is going to see that in, on me. So the way you trip, the, the, the way you um, talk to you is the way that others are going to do it as well. So uh, prioritize yourself. And it doesn't mean that you are going to be selfish with others. It means that you love and you respect what you are. So uh, prioritize any moment yourself, because in that way you are going to achieve amazing things. And also self-respect, okay? If you, if you go to the mirror and you see yourself and you start saying, oh no, oh my God, ugly. I, I, I don't like that, that shirt, it doesn't fit with me. I don't like the way my hair is. I prefer to have a straight or curly. So if you start thinking about those things, believe me that people or, or uh, around you is going to say the same. If you start like feel, feeling confidence with what you are, believe me that everybody is going to uh, detect that on you and is going to love the way you are. The second one is influence. And I know that in some cases we, we try to like not pay attention to what others say, but even if we don't want to pay attention to that, we are going to, to be thinking what others like have for you, the opinion of, uh, the, of people that is like outside. In my case, I remember that I used to pay attention too much to what my friends like said in the past. For example, if I uh, was using like a, a, a new pair of pants, and a friend said, oh no, it doesn't fit with you. You are like too heavy. You are like too fat to that pen. I remember that I used to like uh, say the same and I decided to shame my, my, my clothes. Uh, let me tell you that I was like in the point to wear my mother's like clothes. So I don't want that for you. I want you to like feel confi confidence with what you are and what you are wearing. And also, uh, don't pay attention to belief and interest that others have as well. Believe in what you think and believe what you want, okay? And the, th the third fact is attitude, okay? Everything is going to change if you have a, a positive attitude in your life. Even if people is telling you that you, you don't deserve anything, if you wake up and you say, oh my God, I need to like stand up, be happy, do what I want. I will wear this because I feel confident. I will to, well, I want to be outside giving my best, trying my best. Believe me, even if you are, if you haven't like taken a, a shower, anyone is going to say, yeah, that, that is not going to say, oh, that person uh, it has, hasn't like taken a shower. It's going to see a person with a positive ad attitude and you are going to change you and also uh, the work. 
So I want to finish with three phrases that also have helped me a lot. And I want you to share with you in order to like put it in, into practice in your life. The first one is renew or reinvent your image or look. And I am not talking about like using makeup or putting like the uh, Gucci, like Gucci, like clothes or, or trying to like buy the most expensive vaccines for you. And talking about renew your image. I want you to like, Stand up, smile every single morning, see uh, and accept what you see, what you see on the mirror. Number two is have a good relation with you, and that way you are going to have a good relation with others. Respect yourself. And the, the third one is communicate with yourself. Self-talks are the best way in order to love ourselves. Self-talk make you think, analyze, and um, change your mind. In that way, you are going to love. And that reflection won't be hard to see. And you are going to accept what you see on the mirror every single day. Thank you. Good. Thank you so much, Alejandra. Clap for her. Good. So thanks for sharing. Thank you. Can you please stop sharing your screen? Thank you. I thought you were coming. <laughs> no, not yet. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. You can be the, the next, don't worry. Okay, next one. Who wants to pass? Yeah. Kayla. Kayla. Okay, let's take a stage. The stage is yours. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, Just give me a second. I'm going to go back to my play. Huh? Yes, I, I just forgot that I, mean, I, I just did it like in the middle of my presentation. I remember that I did it before my class. Yeah, I'm already there. I'm already there. So you can start playing. No. Yes. I feel like, yeah, there's some things like we need to do. 
just in order to overcame this similar status or this uh, phases. But um, I just want to bring this up because art it takes a large, like a great amount of attention when we talk about society and questions. Uh, art can help us. If, for most of you might be thinking art is making art, the following arts, there are some things that I do manually. There are there are a lot of uh, there are other people that play play instruments. There are some people that also are makeup artists, and this is also considered as art. Or there are some people that dance, and this is also considered as art. But I just want to bring out uh, some uh, artists to this. Uh, I don't know, like performance, and one of these is Mr. McDonald. Guys that are considered, and basically the artwork, and they were drum on this, drum on this, but basically because of their life. The first one is uh, Vincent Mando. You might know him for the Ferrari, there are another that is called Portrait, and there is another that is called Soul Clouds. Um, there's some people that says that Vincent Van Gogh was like a big people because he was uh, usually just that cut the load of his ear and it just and there's people that he just like give the love of his ear to uh, a like a boy. Yeah, but this is uh, totally um, like for real. Basically he got his love in a fight with his like friend. Was a friend because the friend was the one that got yeah. But basically, it was, it was one of the artists that was a uh, into a uh, critical mental disorder. He was considered one of the greatest artists of all times, but he was a uh, facing a, a mental disorder. There's another <coughs> one that is called Free the Cut. You might not know, but most, uh, most important is because he has like, she has like a great. Um, I don't know, like art in history. She was uh, involved in a bus crash uh, in a whole uh, accident and she got like really, really injured. That's why she needs to go to many medical surgeries. And basically, it's just uh, art. Let her just uh, perform her skills. Uh, also, she was married with Diego Rivera. Bring him, bring she, uh, bring her up down so And to art, she tried to simply all her emotions, all uh, her feelings, and try to just be calm or just get out of her, her mind. And just try to overcome her masturbation. And the last one is Yayoi Kusama. This might be different from like you, you, another artist. And these three artists, uh, well, the one thing I did have in common is that the three of them are have a uh, overcome from people, from partners, from art. And just to conclude, um, why art should be, or it is really more than a new, for example, education topics. Well, uh, most of you will, show, uh, will just use art when you have like digital classes or things like that. Well, but uh, there's some people that really, really need art just in order to perform in their fields. Um, nowadays, we have like so many options, so we can just like, a, I don't know, like set to see the things that we're feeling or just like try to help someone else to do work. But yeah, at that time, that was back in the days, there were people that was not really into sharing feelings or sharing emotions. And the only way that they could, you know, like uh, try to convey their emotions or try to uh, help in those situations, it was with art. So, just to conclude, art, uh, there are some methods that are, you know, like trying to, uh, I don't know, like to the that things. Uh, there's some really good studies that said that uh, some teachers that have, have a, just to put art, for example, activities as drawing us and also dancing have pretty, really good results because they are trying to get uh, feelings and emotions into the, the students' lives and well, activity itself. So that was it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, really interesting.
topic. I think that this is something that I don't really know why we do not think too much about mental health in our culture, uh, which is something that I mean we, we should pay attention to. And I always talk about it that we as teachers do not consider sometimes things that students have not any particular need. So there any need we put, I mean we just simply don't care. Right, and, and this is something that should be changed a lot. Yep. If you want, yes, you can, you can. So while you get ready, I'm just gonna tell you, I have a, I have a student and I'm, and I'm and his teacher right now, who is, um, who has like a special, like a, like special need, he gets, I don't really know what his mental thing is, but he, he can speak English really well. But the point is that sometimes he gets like really compulsive. And for example, like sometimes you would see him and that's what some of my students told me that he comes with a little guitar to class. And in the middle of the class, he starts playing the guitar just because he wants to. And sometimes he goes to the back and he hides behind the desk. And then suddenly people come like nothing. So it's it's hard to deal with all with all these issues. I mean, particularly because I never knew. I mean, I I I'm still having some issues like how to treat these these type of people. So and that's something that we don't learn yet. Because I mean, I when I was learning how to become a teacher, I mean, nobody told me like. Okay, you should do this when you have a, 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 a kid or a student with special needs. So I'm still, I'm still having a lot of struggles to face that. And it's really hard. Sometimes it comes with, the, with this shared like all on one. So I have to tell you this. And he's like, I don't know, he's like scary. And people just like go and show up like that. Like, and he goes, so when I see him coming with his guitar, I know that maybe he's gonna come up. And I got a I, I got an email from his mom too, asking me to talk to the other teachers just to be more considerate, right? And the point is that nobody wants to be with him in group works because of that, and it's hard. So mental health is something that we should pay attention. And thank you, Kayla, for touching on that. Okay, Naim, can you can you speak? I am able to. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Awesome, sir. Good morning, everybody. Um, my name is Nain. I'm going to be sharing with you a very special topic. I think everybody is talking about things that are very emotional. In this case, I'm going to be talking about motivation, which is la actually my topic is lack of motivation right now. So I really want to start by giving you two, three seconds to think about your motivation right now. Is it going good? What kind of motivation do you have? Is it coming from you or is it coming from outside sources? So I'm gonna give you a couple of seconds for you to think about it, okay? Um, okay, so uh, talking about motivation, I really wanna be touching some very important things. Number one, it's gonna be the literal meaning of motivation, which is uh, desire. So you think about motivation, you have to think about the things that you desire and you're motivated to do so, and that way you're gonna get them. The motivation develops over time. So we have to think about motivation, but number one, we have to think that motivation is not just, you just wake up and you feel motivated like that. Motivation, it's built up like a house. So you have to be put in brick by brick by brick. And when do we have to start doing that? When we have kids or when we are little kids, okay? Because motivation is a result of experiences that we have had. Motivation um, is influenced by the satisfaction of needs. Motivation can be as complex and as easy as standing up and getting a glass of water because you need it. It's sad, you know, you just go there, you drink the water and you're not thirst anymore. So that is motivation. It is that complex that you can, you know, motivate yourself to pick up a book or maybe go online and find out that PDF that you have to read and it's gonna be around 45 pages and about a topic that you don't want to read. You know, motivation is as easy and as complex as that. 
Uh, motivation also is uh, initiates, ingrates, and maintains goal-oriented behavior. I really want to make an emphasis on goal-oriented behavior because goals, as I told you, can be easy and complex. Goals in life, goals in everyday life, you know? Easy, the easy things is like, oh, I have to clean my room today. Do I feel motivated to do that? Another one, oh, I have to finish my degree by this year. I have to do good, uh, you know, on the TOEFL test. That's kind of motivations that we have to think about how good are we doing with that kind of motivation. So just want you to keep on thinking about your motivation. I am giving you some clues. Maybe that might help you to understand if you are motivated correctly or not, you know? Also, I really want to talk about motivation uh, that leads to increased effort and energy. Everybody here, I think, has uh, been practicing any kind of sport or at least has been, you know, running or going to the gym, whatever kind of things that you have done before, but you were enough motivated to keep on going, you know? You gave yourself a little bit of more energy when you were motivated. Have you tried to do exactly the same thing without being motivated. So that's a huge difference on your um, development while doing this. Number one, if you're motivated, that's gonna lead you to increase the effort you develop, you know? And of course, the opposite is gonna happen if you're not motivated uh, enough. Motivation also determines whether a student will, you know, pursue a task, you know? We're talking about even a difficult one. Let's put it in our, you know, in our content, TOEFL test. If we're not motivated, even though we have good English, even though we have all the skills in the world, we can be native speakers. But if you're not motivated, you're not feeling in the mood, the way you want to put it, motivation is like that. You're not going to make it good, you know? So motivation, it comes with enthusiasm and, you know, lackluster attitude by the end. A balanced motivation makes a huge, huge change in life, you know, because sometimes uh, is the key to ensuring positive outcomes. Um, you were sharing something about the, your students. I, I actually didn't have this into my, into my presentation, but I want to share it. I do have a special needs as well in my classrooms. And um, students that have problems, you know, they regularly are going to come to you and talk to you just out of nothing. And they're gonna be talking about everything. It's because they wanna feel motivated. They want you to hear or find out for them what is going on. So motivation as teachers is very important too. So motivation is gonna go in every kind of thing, thing I'm sorry, little thing that we're gonna be working on. So the best way to sustain motivation, which is something that I really, I really want to close up with, is to support internal drives with the right kind of uh, external feedback. This is playing with the inside, with the outside, you know, making a combination. Intrinsic motivation is going to help you to build up a better development, you know. It's going to keep you doing what you are going to be doing, you know. It's going to help you to develop whatever it's going to be your um, task to do. But you have to play this also with the extrinsic motivation, what comes from outside. If you keep yourself, you know, pushing your, but you don't have intrinsic motivation and you're just laying on ex extra stuff, things from the outside, that is not going to be okay. Because when those factors that are making you feel good are gone, you're going to lose your motivation and you're going to lose the main important thing in your life, which is going to be that development that you might be doing in the future goals. So this was my presentation for, about motivation. I hope you guys keep on thinking about what keeps you motivated. I mean, and if you think that you need more motivation, try to build it up in your own, okay? Try not to feel only motivated about the things that come from outside. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Norma. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nain. Okay, good. So we are doing nicely.
with the time, who would be the next? Okay, good. So Joe is a Okay, are you ready? Yes. You can remove your mask if you want to feel more comfortable, right? I know it's it's you know when you are in the front and Kayla, you you just remove it, all right? The other ones I didn't tell you, but I mean if you feel comfortable, I you can remove it. I mean that's not there's a problem. You're apart, so there's no problem. Okay, so you can start. The seven powers that 
every entrepreneur must do so. According to an article published by company, the Commercial in 2021, the seventh power that every entrepreneur must cultivate are number one, the power of gratitude. Be grateful. It is better to be grateful for what you have and not for what you have. This will positively and directly benefit the activity that you carry on every day in a more common. Number two, the power of emotional We know that one of the characteristics of a leader is the ability to keep his emotions in order. And the leader knows that nothing is personal, that what happens with his team is the event depends on him. Um, the leader knows now how to be assertive, empathetic, and confident. The leader knows how to make the best for team to reach the goal and objective of the company. Number three, the power of Experience. A successful person it is not separate from the spiritual side of him, on contrary, we put basis. Meditate and do activity that with your spirit can lead to quality, serenity, self knowledge, security, and self esteem, which will be reflected in the result of the combat. Number four. The power of passion. If you are passionate about your startup, you will undoubtedly go far because it is something it is something that you dream and believe in. It is not something false, it is something that comes from the spirit of your heart. Number five, the power of wisdom. Get a love. The majority of the things that you need to know about business and the current um, and if great minds can give you their advices, training, and share them. You know that knowledge was, was made to be shared and to be moved. Number six, the power of don't be afraid when you are speaking to a successful person. Many times we think we are to approach important people with a stupid chain or security. It's even bigger than the scene and the will never come to the of You see us, but that's a lie. All the people that we are not are human. They are the same ability as you. If you are, if you are my first or successful person, maybe you have this, this ability. Number seven, the power of yourself. If you believe in yourself, successful, you come by yourself. You don't just believe in yourself by thinking about it, but by acting accordingly, what you see, Say and feel. Believe in yourself. Take risk and remember that self-confidence is a right aside to be a complete entrepreneur in your life, in your life right. Well, I would like to tell you that I'm starting a, a new business. But this is a this is a a business decoration event. I don't know if if this will will be successful, but people say nothing went through and nothing, nothing came. Also, I made decoration like this. Box, numbers, and some other conclusion. That attitude or any aptitude in a person to start new challenges and new business. We have great challenges when trying to start a business, but we have to pay attention 
from the opportunities. You thought Beverly said, if opportunity does not, we'll have it. Thanks, sir. Thank you so much. Like you presented something that you are into, right? It's not like when you talk about something, you just say it because you just want to talk about something. It's something that you are experiencing. So thank you so much, Kenya, for, uh, for sharing with us uh, a little bit about entrepreneurship. I didn't know that you are an entrepreneur. So that's really fine. It's really cool that, I mean, you can talk about it. And it would be great also that you can share this with more, with more people, right? Because that, that's inspiring, it's really inspiring. I always, I always think about entrepreneurship as something that, that I would like to try, so, but I, I still do not know what. So the only thing that comes to my mind is, you know, like getting things from the US and sell them like a, like an online store, and to buy access and to get uh, accessories for girls. Because yeah. girls always buy things even when they don't need them. <laughs> so, so I always, I, I, I mean, I have that in my mind, but, but I, I just don't think of this of doing. So it's good that you can share that with us. Yeah. But I don't know why, once, once somebody told me, like, but they don't really have that. I mean, like, rings and things like those, too. I mean, you can make money. But, I mean, Next time. Right? Huh? It's risky. It's risky. Okay, so thank you so much for sharing. Another person? Another? We're having hopefully three more people before the break. Attend. Do you want to be heard? Yeah. Okay, come. <laughs> so you you want to leave early, but you don't pass. So now you see that is encouraging people because she can encourage. Good. There we have it. <laughs> We were clapping for you. So you can pass and then you go. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, we did. So now everybody's leaving, right? They're gonna leave me alone. Okay. Natalie. The thing is that we cannot wait too much. We cannot wait too much because we need to finish. No virus, right? Maybe. Can I get infected? Where can I? There is one over there. Oh, no? No. There's no there's this one, but I don't know what oh, that's the mouse, that's the mouse. I mean you can apply it, yeah. It's just it's just visual way, it's not really like this or less. I'm saying yeah. Yeah. hope you don't find something. <laughs> no. <laughs> See right there. I guess I'm 
Oh, you're used to share. Yeah. All right. All right. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Uh, it's, well, my name is Christian, and today I'm going to be talking about how we can be more fluent in English. Now, I know that when we begin to learn a new language, it's very, very difficult to be fluent, and sometimes we might feel insecure about how we're going to make this happen. Um, so I know that a lot of us are doing this because we want to progress, we want to do something with ourselves. Some people want to have better jobs, some people want to go to the United States, or maybe to Europe, and they need to learn a second language. And what better language to learn than English? And in this case, uh, we know that English is an international language, so it is a very, very uh, good choice that you have to make, right? So in this case, I know we have the one you travel to different places, right? And I'm pretty sure that you're waiting to communicate with your English, right? Yeah. Especially because the European countries, they have their, their national language, but they also have English as a second language. And other schools in Asia, like the Philippines, they have a second language, and it's always going to be English. So, so in this case, um, I'm going to share with you first this first tip that really helped me to acquire uh, fluency in the language, and first is vocabulary. Now, why, why vocabulary? When I was young, I learned English from zero. I didn't know not a single word in English. I mean, it was pretty easy because I was young, but uh, in this case, vocabulary really helped me become a better uh, English speaker. How or why? Well, at first, I was uh, raised in a uh, House where only the only language that was used was Spanish. And then when I went to school, I had to learn how to speak. I wasn't able to communicate um, uh, because I couldn't speak English. So in this case, uh, what I did was I learned a lot of vocabulary. Now, when you're an ESL learner, people teach you vocabulary with pictures, images, like videos. So it's very graphic. So in this case, I learned English looking at images. People would point out, uh, for example, speaker, microphone, uh, whiteboard. You know? So they would show you the words that you are learning. So in this case, I feel like here uh, we have like a, I don't, don't want to say deficit, but I feel like we can change like the methods that we are using to teach, especially low level English speakers, because uh, I feel like we're giving them too much grammar, and we're teaching grammar, and sometimes we're not using grammar correctly. We're teaching vocabulary, and sometimes we're not using or pronouncing the vocabulary correctly. So I think vocabulary uh, is very important because at some point, you're going to need to communicate with somebody, even if you're a beginner. Uh, for example, when I used to go, for example, to McDonald's, um, I didn't know how to structure a sentence, but I knew how to say hamburger, I knew how to say fries, I knew how to say soda, so they knew what I wanted, right? So I wasn't going to say like a full sentence, like, hey, I want to eat a hamburger, some fries, and some soda. <laughs> All I said was hamburger, fries, and soda, and they gave me the food. So that's why the dead man is really important. So the next tip that I have for you guys is you want to eat. Now, I may look crazy sometimes to people because when I watch movies, when I uh, listen to songs, when I watch my TV series, I talk to myself, I talk to the TV, I talk to the computer because I feel like, I feel like uh, I think I'm in the series, right? I feel like I'm in the movie. For example, I was watching this TV series it's called Suits. Now, Suits is about lawyers, and they have an extensive vocabulary. They have different things that they talk about. So they talk about cases, lawsuits, all kinds of things that uh, you learn about this stuff, right? For example, I didn't know the word perjury. And perjury is basically that you are incriminating yourself by something that you say. You know what I mean? So uh, it, it's something that uh, really helped me because um, watching TV series, especially different cultures, right? Uh, as you mentioned, I, mean, I, like, I like this little way of speaking where translation is fair expression and she moves her hands a lot. Black people talk like that. Now, uh, Asian people, they have certain accents. Uh, Indians have a very thick accent. And it sounds like 
they omit the T when they speak and they just like switch it for a T. So what do you do? So it, it sounds like kind of funny, right? But uh, you know, you have to uh, be able to acquire all these types of uh, dialects and these types of ways to get to the T. So in this case, uh, this helped me a lot because I actually watch the news a lot because they have uh, fluency, right? They, they hardly ever make mistakes. They're, they're never uh, uh, you know, doing this. Like they're always, they always, it's like a script, right? So they, they talk and they don't make mistakes. They pronounce things correctly. And that helped me uh, with my pronunciation because the words that they say, uh, they always pronounce it correctly. So I try to imitate the way that they speak. I try to imitate how they, um, how they carry themselves, how they uh, use phrases because they're, as you know, in English, they have a lot of phrases that uh, sometimes they're metaphoric. You know, metaphoric is that you basically saying something, but it really means something else, right? So in this case, uh, it's very important. Now, there's another tip uh, that I have here that is very, very important is error correction. As you know that we're always going to make mistakes. We're learning. Right, so, but it's very important when somebody corrects you or when you correct yourself, for example, like when you're watching a TV series, that you actually correct yourself and if you learn a word or a phrase or uh, a structure, whatever it is that you have learned, that you actually put it into practice. You know? For example, the word, uh, she used the word entrepreneur. So if I hear a word and she said entrepreneur and that's the correct way of pronouncing it and I was saying something else, you know, I'm going to correct myself. The next time that I use this word, I'm going to say it correctly. You know, the next time that I use a, for example, uh, I didn't know uh, a lot of phrases when I was young, but growing up, I heard them a lot. Uh, for example, um, there was a, a word that I didn't really know what it meant because I was, I was basically a beginner. Uh, it was dishwasher. And my mom used to say it, but she said it incorrectly. So what happened to me is I was in class at the time. And my mom said, uh, because she didn't know how to speak English. So she, was, she said dishwasher. She didn't like she didn't say the word. So when, when somebody asked in school about jobs, they were like, Listen, you need to study, you need to uh, go to school. No, you're going to be stuck doing this some uh, minimum wage job that you don't want to do. That's what I said, because I've always been the confident type. I always like to participate. I always like to be that person that uh, uh, speaks out. So in this case, I said, yeah, because you don't want to be like my uncle and be a key washer, right? So, and then everybody kind of laughed because that's not how you say it. And then the teacher said, uh, no, listen, it's a, it's, it's, it's a dishwasher, not a dewasher. So that's when I said, okay, everything that I say, I'm going to have to look it up and I'm going to have to, but I kind of felt embarrassed, right? Because if you don't say something correctly and then everybody else knows that it's not correct, you know, it's going to feel a bit embarrassing. But um, I don't mind embarrassment. I'll embarrass myself, but I'll learn. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, and something that I didn't mention that I think is very important is confidence. You have to have the confidence. You have to put your insecurities to the side when you're learning something. I mean, that's because one, you're going to make mistakes. Two, people might look at you funny. But in this case, I feel like uh, the only progress you're going to make is if you actually don't care about what people think, you don't care about what they say about you, and just make sure that. The progress you do is inside, you know, and then you do it. I don't care if it takes you one year, two years, or ten years to, to be fluent in English, but just try it, you know. And uh, those are basically the tips that I have for you guys. And I hope you can explain how you talk to the devices. Uh huh. Oh. <laughs> So basically what I do is like when I'm watching a movie, for example, I actually watched the movie yesterday, um, the new movie, The Doctor Strange. And uh, there were like some scenes that they were kind of like, you know, graphic and, and 
Some of them were kind of like twisted and they actually showed, they were actually called the Illuminatis. Like there was like a group called the Illuminatis. And I'm like, man, I heard the Illuminatis before, before, but it wasn't like- something. Also, you don't actually talk to the devices, you talk to the, the things happening. The yeah, like, like I'll be like, okay, so I heard it, but, but not, not, a, not every time. Like sometimes it's different. Sometimes like, for example, when I'm watching like a TV series about, uh, I don't know, like comedy, like a comedy TV series, and they say something funny. And, and, and for example, like, I don't know if you've heard uh, like stand up comedy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in this case, uh, if he says something funny, I'll be like, man, you're crazy. Why you say that stupid stuff? Oh, okay. You know, like, you know what I mean? Like, so I thought that you were actually talking to the same type camera. She was pretty today. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, about, what's, <laughs> about what's going on in the. In oh, the okay. <laughs> okay. All right. So thank you. Yeah, that's what I understood at first. I'll talk to myself and then I'll talk oh, okay, okay. about what I see. Uh, yeah, I was like, wow. My computer got to the dish. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I thought. Yeah, that, that's pretty much it. So we'll be the last before the break. Oh, well, now that you already have water, right? <laughs> <laughs> that is about the past. Yeah. <laughs>
all of all of one of one that it the stores and all these people want to have uh, a better resource. So it is an important part of learning process in middle school, and it can help you become a better student in various directions. But the most important reason is why we need to do homework. That is the question, right? What do we need to do? It's not maybe it's not necessary that you have to spend a lot of hours doing homework because you can learn in your uh, daily lesson of the school, but you have to always pay attention on those things that maybe your teacher are not going to teach you because we have different needs. So the fact is that homework as a concept has been around for hundreds of years and today is considered the norm of for modern schools. And I was reading some articles that history of homework. And the thing is that we take homework as a negative uh, concept. Because if we go back to history, Russian people used to think that homework was something for uh, make some experiments and to take uh, those kind of things to um, go against the United States. So that's why we think that homework is something negative. But the truth is that now we all know that it's really helpful. And also, when I was reading that research, I found out that um, though at Aston and that Norris, the were two professors of the Young Hopkins University, they said 10 benefits of homework. And I want to share these benefits with you. And the first one is practice. What practice? But we all know that we do it better by practicing. What has been learned at school is not enough. You have to do more. We have to give the extra money. The second thing is participation because we always want to get involved in different activities. And when you go on and do your homework, we're going to learn more about the topic that the teacher already explained. Number three, preparation. Why preparation? Because for work to come, for the work to come and allowing them to prepare ahead, when we teach, when we do homework, we always learn how to do the things better. Because as we know, in the future, we are going to have some responsibilities that we have to learn. And I'm pretty sure that most of you have you ever get a job and you know what are the responsibilities that those uh, activities have. And then we have the benefits number four. Uh, please can you also read the benefits number four? Yes, personal development and type even show them the importance of good work ethic. That means that if you know how to organize your time, the better you are going to accomplish your goal. For example, if you are um, doing a research like us in this module, we always uh, have to keep in mind how to manage your time because you know, twist, we are going to have a sport and we don't want it. And also, not, for, not, for, not only for the race, it's also because I think that all of us have something in mind. We have, we need something to uh, think something about it. And I was uh, talking with Giovanni in the last module and I said, you know, I was thinking that maybe taking this research is going to be boring. I'm not saying that maybe it's not so boring, but <laughs> we have to take something uh, meaningful. And I have learned how to do the 
Um, and you see question millimeter truth, you think you got the meter truth. And I I never have the the time to make a, a deep research, a deep research that that I'm ready to do it. And then we have number five, parent child child relationship. I know that some of you have this opportunity, but other really have this opportunity in the future, and this is really important because bond and develop their relationship to become learning support. If you're going to have a child, or maybe your your niece, I don't know, if you spend the time with them, you're going to to encourage or reinforce your relationship. So this is really important. And then number six, parent teacher communication. And this is very important because it is a bridge between home and school. Sometimes as well. I was teaching in a school and sometimes the fathers uh, show up and they start talking. So how is my kid doing? And the, the thing is, why they are asking that? Because they are helping him with that the homework. And then you notice that maybe they just assign to another person to help with the homework when it's something that they should do with them. And you have to take these advantages because in that way, you are going to have a better communication. You are going to be aware what my kid is learning, what my kid is doing. So the seventh benefit is peer interactions. Encourage them to interact with their peers and work together. And sometimes we have group comforts. And it's, I think it's a perfect opportunity because we have uh, the space to communicate with others and not just uh, uh, in, in people, right? And then we have that number eight that is false. Each step more in the appearance to be false. And that means that as teachers, if you work as teachers, you have to be uh, very careful how much the students is going to take to develop that homework. And it's something really important because you don't want your kids or your students to do that homework for uh, extra hours. You have to classify the homework they're going to assign to your students. And then we have public relations. What's going on in schools and current practices? And the last one is punishment. Can you please help me to read that last one? Then? Yes. And punishment doesn't mean that you're going to, like in Buen Salvadoreño, you're going to bring a bell and start. <laughs> uh, we would like to do it, but we can
they frequency. And that's really important. In that way, you know in which things you are better, what things you like the most. For example, if you are very in mathematics or maybe as uh, Pila has mentioned her passion for art and so on. And I would like to share with you these awesome words from two persons we have worked in and shared them. And he said that the purpose of homework and the value for this both parents and teachers is the idea that homework completely regularly by students helps to promote a sense of responsibility. And then Jerry says that both a clear and parents say that we further believe that homework has a fundamental part to play in the learning process. And Maybe the way the students become independent learners. So that means that through homework, we can gain responsibility for the things that we did. And also, we learn how to be more independent or be more autonomous. And I would like to share this book. We are doing our homework to make sure we are prepared for the future. And that work is from. Gary ran, and this is a picture of us when we finally complete our homework at 3 a.m. So we need to avoid that. So we need to gossify the kind of homework that we're going to assign to our students. And as a conclusion, we can say that homework has an impact on the students and it helps to improve their in academic achievement and also in their uh, regular homework can improve in a multiple uh, skills from organizational to individual learning process. So that's it. Because of time reasons, we're going to get started now. right now. So, Larissa, do you want to go first? Larissa, you want to go first? So, you want, I don't know, it's up to David. Okay. Okay. Huh? Yeah, if, I mean, we all are looking at you and the people at home too. So Alejandra and Naina are watching. Just, uh, just give me a second and so we're gonna get ready. I hope that we can finish on time. So as I said, if we are not making it on if we don't make it on time, uh, I'm gonna try to record a very quick video and as I get home, I'm gonna post it and just show you so how how you need to structure the report that you need to send on Wednesday, right? So, yeah, this is this one. Okay. So, hi everyone. Good morning. My name is Kristen. I know. And today I would like to talk about something that is uh, really happening nowadays. That is uh, how to relieve from stress at school and work. So, I don't know if you have ever uh, asked or you have ever been in this situation in which um, you want to do good at school or college, you want to get the grades, you want to uh, pass an exam, and you want to do good, right? But at the same time, you, you have to work because you have a job. And this is something that happens nowadays because uh, teenagers want to die and at the same time they want to have a job because they want to have their own money and they want to they want to buy their own things right and studying and working at the same time will be one of the most stressful situations that a person can experience so it's not easy to deal with it but it's um it's pretty good if you do it so uh, first of all, 
automatically shared my experience with you. Uh, you have been a uh, classmate in uh, first year, right? So when I started working when I was in second year, and the reason was because I wanted to buy my own things, right? And I wanted to go out with my friends. And at the beginning, it, it, it was kind of weird because I had never worked before. But uh, with the time, I get uh, used to it. And I used to work only on weekends. So it, it was good, I can say, because I started uh, from Monday to Friday, and I would work uh, Sunday and yeah, Saturday, right? And it was good, but I, I could say that many or most of my classmates would do the homework on weekends, right? And I would, I won't, I didn't have time to do it on weekends, I would do it on uh, the, the weekdays. And later, it got to a point in which um, I, I couldn't like work with my classmates because of that reason. But then last year, I started working almost every day because we had online classes. And I would be at work and at the same time taking a class and, and that happened and it got to a point in which I felt like I was not doing good in any of those uh, areas. I was not doing good at work and either at, at home. And I, I tried, I started to feel so stressed that at some point I was just um, so stressed that I was crying whole day and for no reason. I, it just happened. It, it, there wasn't a reason for me to cry, but I would cry because I wasn't feeling good. And at the end of the chair, what, uh, what's the thing that helped me a lot to overcome that feeling? But first, um, let's talk about why your mental health matters. And this reminds me of what Kayla was mentioning, right? About mental health and how we can care about it. And the thing is that when we have moderate amounts of pressure, um, this will make us uh, a sport of conscious success. So it can be a good thing, but when there's too many things causing you stress, then it could be something very bad for your body and for your mind. Uh, because it could make you feel a lot of symptoms, like you, you can feel panicky, uh, you might also be afraid of doing the wrong thing. Uh, you can also be unable to concentrate or uh, without motivation to continue, right? And that's why uh, if we feel that way, we won't be able to do uh, what we want to do at work or at college. And to to begin working with your with your stress, it's also important to start thinking in what is causing your stress. And uh, it can be very easy to identify that the cause of the stress is this one is just one thing. So it could be an exam or it could be a presentation like this one. Or it can be also a work. Something that you do at work or even your past can stress it. But when there's so many things uh, together, it will be very bad for your health. And this will make you feel like you are not doing good, or it can make you think that you are failing. And that will make you be more stressed and even depressed. So, uh, but at some point, we will know that it is stress, it's something general, like feeling like it's too much work or there is like an unrealistic deadline that you can complete your tasks. But uh, we have to start thinking, what can I do? What can we do about this thing? What can I do about the thing that is causing this stress, right? Uh, Something uh, very important to begin working is talk to a person. It could be a friend or even your boss. Uh, the 
leave them here because if you do not tell a uh, person what you're feeling, they don't, they don't know it, they cannot help you, right? So if you talk to a friend, he can give you some advice, or if you talk to your boss, he can really assure you that you're doing uh, a good work, a good, or doing good at your job. So uh, feeling, the feelings of stress is your body telling you that you're, uh, something is going on, right? that something is not good. And just if we ignore this feeling, we are not helping the stress. We are not helping our body or our mind. So we cannot just ignore it because we have to work on that. We have to pay attention and find a cause. And this takes me to another important point. Uh, that is, how do I avoid stress? If we're having it, right? If we're having stress, how do I avoid it? And I have some uh, tips or recommendations that the first one will be don't leave things to the last to the last minute. We as students tend to do that a lot, I know, because I've been in that place, but we should try to do things uh, what is important, more important first, and then what we want to. Like, for example, I remember that when I was at school, like, saying I was a senior, I used to do my homework first, even before eating. And my mom would um, say to me that, no, this is before the homework and that. But I, I used to like doing the, what did I like before and then what I like to do. It was a, it, it's a good way to, to, to avoid, to avoid uh, leaving the things at the last, at the last minute, right? Uh, another thing is don't say yes whenever you are asked to take on a new piece of work. This is very important because I know that it's cool, it's good to try to be kind and to try to help people, but it's also good to say no. So if you feel, if you know that you don't have time to do extra work, don't say yes to, to everything. Uh, person actually the other one is take steps to motivate yourself and avoid procrastination. That is another topic that we are going to be talking today. Procrastination, right? That means uh, being lazy. So you have to to motivate yourself and do your homework. You can pick, you can try to find a way for you to like doing homework. And also try not to be lazy, right? And the other one is learn to plan ahead and prioritize. And this is something that we do on our own. You have to uh, do it for what is important or what is more important, and then you can do the rest or what you prefer to do. Uh, and at last, how do I deal with stress? We at work and as a student face with pressures every almost every day. But there are some things that you can try to do to relieve from this stress. Like for example, taking short breaks. It's really important for you to take short breaks when you're working, when you are doing homework, and this will make it will help a lot for your mental health and your body. Uh, and you should also take into consideration to find a balance between that uh, two, the work, your work, and your your homework or your college stuff. So you should find a way in which you can work without having quality in mind and try to uh, leave time to do homework without having to think about your, your job. Okay. Um, and another thing is that only if you do have time or only if possible, try to get regular exercise because working out helps you with stress, uh, anxiety, and even depression. And the last thing that I was mentioning uh, was the advice that, that I was going to give you that helped me a lot to, to release from stress at work and in a college. Uh, this is like the best advice someone ever gave to me. That is like uh, nothing is going to happen if you 
don't achieve your, your thing, but uh, the first try. Uh, it's really nothing going to happen if you drop a subject. It's not it's something that that is not bad. It's like it's not going to happen anything bad if you fail. It would fail. It will help you a lot in your life as well. And your most important thing is uh, that you have to that you have to have in mind is yourself. So that's why you should. Take care of your mental and your mental health and your body as well. And that would be it. Thank you.
Topic is related to 
as when I was thinking about the topic that I want to choose, I received a message from a friend who lives in Canada. Uh, we were so close in the high school, we were partners. I remember that if we were friends, we had a little group that don't separate any time. And I don't talk to him so often. And he, in the message, he told me that if he can ask me something, that was a strength for me. And I answered yes. And immediately he called me and asked me if I knew that the Winfrey had to pay it to him. And this is what I think that it was what the Winfrey for right now X. Uh, lives in a real this is where I live. And you know when like a real is a, a school place that everyone knows each other. Maybe from our friends or neighbors, but knows. And he started to uh, explain the situation. And he started to cry and say I don't believe it, and repeat that, I don't believe it. And I can do, I can't, uh, I don't want to do anything, I don't want to, I don't want to eat, work, and I exactly, I knew what exactly to say, and I give uh, some advice, and I said that uh, we have to continue with the life, we have to overcome that situation. And I choose the topic that is uh, uh, how a state of mind, feeling, and emotion affect the performance of people. Most people, because you perform when you are under pressure, when you are sad, and when you are happy, not the same. We can we uh, can get our get our goal. But we have to be in a good mood. And the emotion drive people, and people drive performance. And the performance, uh, you have to decide how the performance is or will be. Uh, when I think about the situation, I give some advice to my friend. But he said, I don't want to do it. That you will tell me. This is why they don't want to pass the situation. And I remember that uh, quote that six people that said, if you are not willing to learn, no one will stop you. That I can give one advice, 10, 20 advice to my friend, but if he wants to listen to me, no one will stop me. But if you are determined to learn, no one can stop you. It all depends on your mind, your state of mood. But how to develop a strong mind and how to develop a strong mind? Because if you have a strong mind, you will have a strong life. My partner said that his friend uh, said that some spread of a situation or something like that. But she said that it's difficult. But it's difficult to go to ask in this uh, to show presentation with our feeling on this or was now. I know we're thinking about her performance, but you have to learn how to grab your emotion. But we have to learn every day, every day is the opportunity to learn and expand our mind. And thinking about we can do better, we can do better, uh, you can do better if you do something good, you can do better. All in this world, we are uh, the same thing that we choose, the same career, the same French specialization. We have we can have a similar and different. We can have the same skill. We can speak English in different level, but we can. And 
but we have to work on the on performance, on health, on mental Like my partner said, my sister said that this is a, a situation that in this country is difficult because in the school we don't have a psychology. Or needs psychology, I think. I believe. And we have to work on that. I'll speak better at a strong mind. We have to learn and learn everything, everything about everything because we are teachers. We need that. And we need to know about a little bit, a little bit. We need to learn about all sorts of We can't want to grow. What right? is the reason of our life? We have to ask this question. What right? is the reason? We have to improve our skill every day. The mind is like a muscle. We have to exercise every day. But how? When you are uh, under pressure in the work or school or university, you have to identify how to solve the problem and have to continue with the life because we can stay in that situation. We can continue and you have to exercise the mind. We can play cheese, you know, cheese is when you present a, a problem when you are playing and you have to move the, I don't know how to say, okay now, okay, okay. you have to choose the best uh, option or you lost. What is the secret for success? Thinking about this question. What is the secret for success? Is the education in hard work. You have to dedicate one hour in work to study different topics. And the hard work has some. I remember that I saw a video about player, football player, and we have two different players in the football world. Players that have talents, that work with talents, and players that have to work and have to exercise every day, all day, because they have to, they decide to be the best, but maybe you are the best, and maybe, maybe you don't, don't have the talents, but if you work, you can do the best. For example, he's messing with the Ronaldo. You know who of this player have the talent that is messing. And Cristiano had to work, and he said that the mentality is the main point of him. The mentality of which everything about all of period of life. And you have to decide how to react. Circumstance. You have to decide how to react to people. Your emotions are a difficult thing that you can say, uh, I don't want to be or feeling sad today. It is not things that you can decide, but you take control. You have to take the control of your feeling, you have to take the control of your emotion, and you you have to take control if you take the control of this or two uh, things, you have the control of your life. You have to you have to ask this question, can I do better? Yes, you can. But how? We have to work. Work everything. And that's my presentation. Right now, it's not this thing. After the break, when we, when we came, I mean, they were they were telling me the order. Oh, they, they were not there. So they were they charged. You were not. 
uh, give a funny qualification. And if you know what are the meanings of the funny qualifications, uh, you are you might like uh, aware of the message, right? So you in the, the vocabulary is medical issues and some other things. So but if you know what it means, the joint conditions, uh, it is difficult, it is easy for you because uh, you know the meaning and you get the message. So, uh, joint conditions, I don't know if you know the meaning, but it means uh, you have two visions. Um, the other, the video. Uh, without grammar, we can communicate. Without grammar, we can communicate. Um, Kayla, uh, please. What do you think? Without grammar, we can communicate. Um, I think that is, uh, that's true. Thank you very much. You don't know, need to like translate like extensive uh, sentences just to convey a message. So I think that is, I mean, if you want to have like an appointment or you want to, you know, like, Communicate with people in the United States. It's just a matter of you to go give them uh, You don't have to. The people, uh, the person, uh, was it difficult to get your ideas? And, but if you know, um, if you know all the emphasis and the goals of your mark, that is for everybody, yeah, I think that it's in with your son. Always focusing with grammar, but you need to think you are like a teacher. Times necessary and vocabulary to relate because the, the students getting uh, more knowledge about it. And the last question that I asked is you know, a lot of people are in help with the speaking skill. In my case, I think that it's a lot of important to know um, different vocabularies and the grammar. And it's more vocabulary because they can help to express your ideas always. No, so for for them, in the explanation, in the old man, but it, the point is a the vocabulary express your emotions uh, in the whole of dance because when if you, when you are for example when you are sick if you know the vocabulary when the like a fever or something like that you they can't communicate well and the other people uh, present difficult your in getting um, with our speaking. And, and I invite you to um, do a lot of uh, the other things because I think the story can help you in the other aspects or areas that related because in uh, in this career when you are um, medical or teacher or medical teacher and they are to that it is useful and the in the life because it is different when you are um, in a high school when you are uh, in the real situation, then, then you uh, need, to, need to learn a lot of things. Uh, and thank you for listening.
guessing, right? Good morning. Um, my name is Jesse and today I'm going to be a, uh, I'm going to be talking about a topic that I'm really into, and maybe some of you can relate a little bit. So, um, well, have you heard this kind of sayings like, "Oh no, I have to do my homework. I have to finish my projects." I need to walk my dog. I have to clean my 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 room. Or well, I have a lot of things to do, and I'm just running out of time. So if you feel kind of related to that, if you have said those things, then maybe you're going to be a little bit interesting about um, some things that I'm going to give you about procrastination. So and if you don't know what is procrastination, basically it is the action of um, doing something, I mean like delaying or postponing doing something, even though you know that you're gonna have like negative consequences from not doing that action. So well um all the time I have said things like I work better under pressure or um, if I do it at the very last moment, I'm going to be like more trouble than that or I'm gonna have better ideas or a lot of stuff. And I realized that uh, I put myself under pressure and I feel more stressed when I do those things because at the end you don't have enough time to do it and when you start doing what you have to do, you find that you could have done it better if you have done it previously. And that's something that we just don't know until we start doing the action. So um, as the problem of the procrastinator, I am a procrastinator, so I chose this topic because maybe I feel still cold and, and, and try to change some things. Uh, but yeah, if you are a procrastinator, you will find yourself making excuses in order to, you know, to, to waste your time and, and, and start doing things later. But I'm going to give you some things that maybe could, could help you to improve this. And for example, the first one is to set a start date. We know that we, all, we usually have a deadline and we get used to be ready for the deadline, but it is better to be set a start date so we are going to have a, a, like more time to think of everything that we are going to do or to be more or to, to be more creative because we're going to have more resources in order to create what we have to do. But yes, um, it's when you do things and you don't have time because usually what happens to me is that when I start doing something I cannot stop doing it but what is difficult is to sit and think of what I have to do and not getting like distracted or just sitting and start doing what I have to do it's the most difficult part so that's what we have to talk into and try to set a start date so you're not going to be running out of time. Also, um, you have to remember that putting pressure on yourself or, or doing things under pressure, even though you think you work better like that, it's not great because being stressful or putting yourself under um, that situation is not productive because you're not dealing with a lot of bad feelings or negative things that are not really doing, that are not doing well to your health, to your mental health. 
So it's important to remember that. But I think um, it's another thing that you can do is to have like a to-do list and also promise yourself a reward. For example, it could be something as simple as, um, okay, I'm going to read the book that I want to read when I finish it, or I'm going to listen to the new album of my favorite singer, or I'm going to wash my cereal when I finish it. And, it, and maybe if you're feeling generous with something, you can go out and get an ice cream or something like that. But it's something that is going to, to get you motivated and also that is going to make you feel challenged. I don't know why, but our mind works better when we feel challenged, even though we think it's not that it's like that, but we also uh, feel like more excited when we are not under pressure, but yes, like, like when someone expects something. So um, other thing that you can use or you can do is to try to minimize distractions. I always find myself, for example, uh, when, I, when I'm looking for something, then I get a message from someone and I got lost from what I was doing. Or, well, if you are a procrastinator, you will feel related to the fact that we can also get distracted, like looking at the, at the wall or the floor or anything. For example, when I was when I was um, like looking for some points here uh, to talk about, my dog came to my booth and I spent like 15 minutes just hiding and talking to my dog. So it's a way of distraction. So that's something that we're always looking for. Or maybe we say, uh, that happens to me that I say, I'm going to look for a video on YouTube in order to get ideas better. But then I start watching other things that don't have anything to do with the topic and I go, and I just get lost. So that's something that we need to be reminded that we have, that we need to have an, uh, a space that is like activated, that's important and not distracted. Um, it is also important to prioritize some tasks. For example, uh, I know that when you want to do something that you have to, what you do is to like choose the easier or simpler things to do first, but it, it should be the other way around because if you know that you have something to do that will require a lot of research or time or preparation, then you should start doing those things first and then you can move on with the, things, the ones that are like easier and you're not going to be feeling that stressed. So um, yeah, but something that like, like the last uh, point that I will give you, the last advice that I can give you about this is that you should like remind your goals and also to be aware of your potential because when we waste or time or when we go home with those things, we're not, um, we are not taking advantage of what we can do because I usually, I usually realize that I would have done better if I had got it previously. So it's like I'm wasting my potential or I'm wasting my skills because I'm not using them. I'm just uh, running out of time. I'm just improvising. I'm just, um, I don't know, doing things because I have to. And I'm not getting some of the resources that I need. I'm not, I'm not doing what I can do. So it's like you have to, to realize that you can do better, that if you are prepared, and that you can like, um, take, advantage, like, take advantage of what you can do. So it's important to have that. And well, I know that it, we usually say things like, why, why I'm going to, to, to live this for tomorrow if I can eat it right now. But, but I think we can do the same thing to what we 
with our responsibilities and with our um, tasks and homework and all the things that we that we have to do. And if it is going to be better for you, and you can actually find to do uh, what you want to do with your job and how much you have. Uh, one of her classmates was, was saying that it is important to have breaks, that short break that we are studying or we are doing something. And if you are procrastinating, you're not going to have time for that. You are just going to be focused on what you have to do at the very last moment and you don't have any break or any time to read and have better ideas. So that's it. Thank you. Like, I know that tests are essential because 
it's a good way to test knowledge because when you are studying, um, you will, that's a good way to teacher to know that you learn that you want, that the that the topic that the teacher taught in the class you understood also that's a good way I know that Cheta are important so but the the reason why I, I think that that okay it needs to be like a balance between tests and projects because uh, not all the time we make a success, a test, a test, no, no, right? And since like two years, COVID, since COVID, all the dynamic of tests and class, online class, and all of the stuff have changed. And now it's like very, um, a whole different experience to like make it when doing a test. Because you know the teacher is, is watching you. You are home. Who can maybe you you can uh, start your doing the, the test in your in your computer, but you have your cell phone right next to you, so you can search for more information and that kind of stuff. But the thing is that um, the teacher now has to make a, a test. Totally different, right? To test the, 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 the student's knowledge of the topic. I think that the test are more like the, 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 the student has to, to find the point of view or like analyzing the, the question and give their, their own point of view and experience about that. So that's how the teacher will know that the, the student is. Not cheating on the sample. Now, now uh, in my experience, so now we test and all that kind of stuff. So it's not like now because I, I know that I'm not <laughs> doing very good. I can focus the focus on uh, doing my homework and. I know it's not a, a mathematic stuff because I I need like yeah I have this I have a ten in my lab but I have a four in in my midterm stuff but in the second in the second lab I have a seven and a three in my in test so to pass the subject I need to have like seven in my lab and <laughs> and like and if I have a, a bad score in my test, I will have this up. So that's like like my my like how to explain this. That's what I try to 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 do when I was deciding the subject, right? But I I think that most of us have to to organize to make a schedule to study and to focusing on if we can be there as a student to plus the right? because not all the time will be like that. Like we need to to focus and and be a better student, right? Now uh, we have a lot of advantages in the test and also disadvantages, right? So um, with a test, you will, uh, you will have a straight uh, from memory because you have to memorize the, the concept, the theory, and all that stuff. And you have to have a competitive spirit because if you have a good grade in your test, you will, keep, uh, you will be motivated. You will feel motivated to, to improve and get a best score in your test. Next test. Another thing is that the time management. You manage your time to get, like I will, I'm going to study at, at this time and then I'm going to to go to eat something or something. And it's a good way to keep the organized, right? Now another thing 
that I would to mention is the participant, right? Mm -hmm. Participant trips that we need to Okay, so for example, are the difficult processing of programming and not brainstorming, right? Because you need to memorize a concept, but not give your like, um, like if your point of view or a new idea or be creative, right? You just need to memorize a concept and that's it. And another thing just to conclude is that most of us, uh, most of the students are being judged just for a high score. If you got about a score in the test, you are a high score. That's, and I think that you, uh, that's a fact. Because you're not just uh, And just to a conclusion, I know that we know that tests are important because the students know it. And, and it has to be a balance between this task and the Yeah. yeah. Okay, you can start. One language is that you are two language, languages of the air resource. Uh, dear professor, I'm glad I'm in work. I'm going to this. And uh, I'm glad to be here in a face of class. And uh, I think it's topic to hear with you the family system. I don't know if you have a pedagogies or let's start. In the 
she saw me like this way, like and then she did this, and then you, you better speak in in uh, Spanish. And I was like, I can't. It's the only way that I can communicate because my friend he is a uh, native uh, language is uh, German, and uh, my native language is Spanish, and the only way that we could communicate was. English and as you know, the big friend, you know, they got language. <laughs> and then uh, I was like, Yeah, the people who was around me was looking at me like weird face, like doing this, but uh, it wasn't because I wanted it, was because I wanted to like, Oh, show them that I know them. I know that the people from here, oh, uh, so there I started it one, one year. Uh, and uh, there is a there's no high quality. Oh, there are like no teachers in in this also in uh in high school there are no uh, professional teachers. And uh, I don't know. I, I only I only remember that in uh, high school manner, how to say unlike Apple or there is a couple of classes. Two sentences that I heard and uh, I said, but uh, I know that the people were so kind. Uh, but uh, I wasn't trying to be like, uh, oh, I don't get my homework. And then, and then uh, I said, like, okay, after ending the conversation with the call, I said, the story was the only way that I could communicate. And I was pretending to be something else. And I know that it was. Here faces, but uh, was it only way? But uh, and that was not the case. But uh, another day, I, I was in the public transportation, and uh, one uh, there were two guys, and they were uh, they 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 don't English, and they were like saying bad things about two girls. And then I said like I I they think you didn't come, but I don't think so. And then I heard a conversation, and, I, and they were like, uh, say bad things about those girls. And I said, I hope not to get But they, they do like something to touch the birds, and uh, they did, sorry. And uh, I was like, uh, this, uh, this, uh, this, uh, language to because they said like uh, I don't want to say that, that word but they said a fun word like no bird and then the bird they didn't knew what they were saying I was like oh my god people use English for this kind of thing I don't know what type of point but uh, uh, there are institutions and we have to we have to uh, in my case, I'm not going to that, that, that's good, but uh, yeah, I try to say, okay, if you, uh, I had a friend when we went to the center, and he, he said, okay, what, we, what if we turn to English? And I said, no, okay. I, don't, I, don't, I don't want people looking at me with weird faces and doing that kind of but they are not American, why right? they are speaking in, in English. And uh, yeah, if you can practice if you can uh, practice your English, but uh, we may be here here to win and uh, use this uh, language, you know, this uh, second language in a way, and also uh, let, let it be done that man. I think that are also keyboard <laughs> author in a future film. Uh, I think I don't know, five, four, five years later than others, you know, outside of the speech. And also, my last generation that this is a kind of old presentation that I wanted to share with you. And uh, I hope you got it.
I'm gonna send you a mess. You have you have you send me a message? Um, yeah. I'm gonna send you an uh, an email. Okay. Yeah, because right now I need to focus more. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna email. Okay. Or email me if if I haven't done it today, email me tomorrow. Okay. Okay. okay I'm just gonna go over it quickly. I have I still have ten minutes. Thank you so much for your uh for your for your participation in this activity um we have learned many things and i hope that you may take some ideas of some of the topics that your classmates have shared uh, so what i'm gonna do uh, i'm gonna go quickly and share a couple of uh well i'm, I'm gonna show you one uh, because of, 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 of time reasons i'm gonna show you a couple of but well, one only well, one uh, one project uh, from a student who who just finished a, a report. I was his advisor, so I was his advisor uh, for a, a graduation project. So I usually advise students when they graduate. And sometimes I, 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 I check research projects. So the, this one was the latest student who, was, uh, who worked with me. And um, I'm just going to maximize it over here. I hope that, that, you, that, you, may, that you may see it. Um, so this is what you have to do for your final, uh, for the final document that you are going to present. So hopefully um, you have administered the instruments. Uh, you only have three days. So I hope that you are done with that. Uh, so by Wednesday, you need to send me a report and the name of the report is going to, is going to be named. Well, you may say final report for module two, but but it should be something more like. <laughs> data analysis and interpretation. Ah. ah. Okay. So data analysis and um, and interpretation. So that's going to be basically a the name of, of the report. So what you what what you can what you have to do first is um when you when you show a graphic like the one that you are looking uh that, that you are looking at the screen right now first you need to try to make the graphic uh, understandable right percentages have to be clear and uh, you need to include also a legend or uh, the different indicators from the graphic. So uh, people tend to misunderstand about, about this section. Like, so we need to, we need to write conclusions and, and so far you don't need to do that because uh, for module number three, I mean, the next module that you're going to take which I don't know the name and Mr. Peña didn't reply to the message that I sent. Uh, I don't really know which one you, which one did you taking? Which, which, which is the name of the next module? Reduction, right? Or something like that. So you may know. So, uh, so Maika is going to take back uh, this group. So she's going to be, uh, she, she's going to be working with you and you are going to assemble everything you've done so far. Um, I didn't go over uh, the, the, the revision that she made. She asked me to, uh, to, uh, to, to revise again the literature review, which basically I didn't do because 
she had to do it. So <laughs> I, was, I was asked to go over the data analysis, to talk about the instruments and how you may analyze it and check this report. So uh, for next module, you're going to put everything together and you are going to draw the conclusions of your work. And you're going to put back what, uh, what you did uh, uh, last module, right? So uh, my section was to focus on this. So probably she can take a look at the literature review again later. So if she asks you, if I did tell her no, <laughs> don't, don't, don't lie, Natalie. I, I mean, I didn't check it. So you, no, 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 I mean, the, yeah. Yeah, you may say that I know, you know, like, because you were busy, right? And so, so, so I was. He, he asked us to tell you that it was your job. No, I'm not telling you about that. Basically, I didn't, I didn't have much time, obviously. And I mean, she had to, she had to review it last, 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 last module. So basically, as I said, the report, you have to present or you need to bring the, the graphic and the interpretation that you give to this graphic. So basically is this section, you tell the reader uh, what you, how you interpret it. For example, like in this graphic, you, it's easily to see. There are four blocks, each block in the graphic has 25%. So what does it mean? The question is, de que manera hace su práctica verbal? Related to oral, 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 oral communication. So it says, it calls the messages, listening to music and watching movies, uh, no regular practice or uh, uh, conversations among peers. So basically 25% is easy to identify. So if there are 20 students who were interviewed or were surveyed, basically you said that the opinion among the students is divided that there are four predominant uh, aspects on how people practice or do not practice the language. If it is 20, 20 people that were surveyed and we have 25% of each, so that means that it is how many persons? If we have 20 and the 25%, huh? Five, exactly. So five people said this, five people said the other, and five said the other. So the interpretation is that the student's opinions is divided. So that is the description. So basically, you describe the graphic in the paragraph that is below. Is that clear? Yeah. Also, you make the reference where you got this information from. Who was the respondent? This, this tells you specifically, like if you use two instruments, for example, you are referring to one in a specific, got it? So if you administer two instruments, obviously what you need to do is to find, if, if, for example, if I ask this, this same question to the teacher, how do you think the students practice uh, oral communication skills? So if I have that a similar question to what the student said, I need to put it together. Got it? So I need to put it together because it is, the, it is related to the same item. And this is because I said I have two issues. Obviously, this, this specific issue is voided if you only have one instrument in your project, which is basically the majority of the, just the, uh, I, I think it was just like one group, or two that have uh, two instruments, right? So there is no problem with you. So basically this is what you do. You just refer again. So uh, this answer will be from the student in the survey. Again, do a specify 
he take the reader does not know what you have administered. Like for example, I said like in this question, this student surveyed students, uh, students and then it says, sin embargo, de acuerdo al, do, al docente universitario. So he's making that connection, right? So it is the same item, as, uh, but related to the students and also. This happens, this, this, uh, this is particularly if you are, okay, I have two minutes. If you are, if you have open questions, for example, or you have an interview, if you are talking about a specific issue, you quote what the interview person told you. Got it? And this is the example. Basado en la pregunta 3 de la entrevista, entre las cuales menciona, hablo of open quotations, the, the, uh, and, the, and, the, and the answer that the person gave me in an open question or in an interview, I make it cursive and between quotations, like the example that you are taking this time right now. Charlas en grupo, interacción entre compañero, poder de discusión e incentivar la práctica activa. Además, el docente destaca lo siguiente, quotation again. Pienso que la comunicación entre los alumnos es muy importante. And then blah, blah, blah. This one, as I said, is if you have an interview. Got it? If you have an interview. Un minuto termina. Lick. Hello. But this Wednesday. Era para ahora. So this one, and then you I have a question for you. Are you going to analyze every single item, item from your instruments? No. no, it's not necessary. You need to prioritize. That's uh, something that I have to highlight. You are not going to have you are not going to analyze every single item. You are not going to do it for every single item. For example, that you have 20 questions from in your survey. You are not going to do that. You have to prioritize based on your research objectives. Got it? So yes. you have questions. Uh, for the module one, I have another microphone that you have research questions or object or questions that you that lead you to create your objective. That was she said that she yeah. So go back to those questions that you made when you came the objectives and try to answer those questions by going to your instruments and if you have a clear answer from those questions, those maybe take those items and put them into graphics and interpret. Got it? Is that clear? Yes. Good. So if you have a question, please reach me uh, to my email uh, email account. Okay. So thank you so much. It was nice meeting you. Um. I don't know si el si el si el si el link me me llama. This coming Wednesday. And don't forget to take that quiz either on Wednesday. It's gonna be something something easy. What time? It's gonna be open the whole day. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Good. You too. Nice meeting you. Hope to see you. Hope to see you soon. Yes. Yeah, see you soon. Bye. 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 Take care. Usted diga ni See ya. See ya. Let me hear it. Cualquiera. Uno está listo para cualquier cosa. No, el de Alejandra, do you have a question? Sí, uh, este, I saw that you like in the answer, there no, were. Okay. Hello? 
I don't hear you right now. Vaya, yo los tengo que dejar. Cualquier cosa me escriben por, okay. por correo. Por. Ok, Lick. Sí, porque tengo... Gracias, Lick. Nice Take care. Ok, bye.